my first guests are a big part of what uh, the Phoenix Suns call the Cotton Club. Uh, one is a board and a very, very nice man. And the other is Cotton Fitzsimmons. Uh, we're going to look at a clip and show them, or show you, what makes them great. to call you cotton i have a problem with the word well i think it's <laughs> i would say this i'm glad they call me cotton i hate to be whitey in the nba <laughs> <laughs> now where did the name come from well the hair used to really be white when i had some hair before i had guys like chambers that make me pull the hair out but uh it used to be solid white and my classmates i think in the fourth grade i have a unique name not a unique name but not a not a popular name uh it's not as unique as yours yeah, but <laughs> lowell lowell is not a very popular name Lowell? Lowell. And I don't think my fourth graders could remember that name. If it had been Tom, Dick, or Harry, like Tom Chambers, it been easy. Yeah. So I had kind of fluffy hair at that time, and it was solid white, so it came out cotton. Yeah. And you have your own show up in Phoenix. Well, if we can call it that, you know, <laughs> compared to this. I mean, let's be realistic no. about it. We have the Cotton Express, and we have a lot of fun on the show. We have different NBA people on. Of course, we have all of our players at different times on. And I interview them and talk with them. Who's been your favorite? Well, I have two of them. Yeah. One of them happens to be one of your favorites, uh -huh. Magic Johnson. Oh, yeah. Good I, good. Because we didn't, we didn't really talk that much about basketball. I talked about a lot of other things. And the other one is Michael Jordan. Uh, I think he's... Probably the, probably the worst interview I've had is Tom Chambers. What can I say? <laughs> but the Tom. best player, the best player I've had. Really? By far. Tom, how would you evaluate him as a coach? Oh, my. Uh, truthfully? Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, truthfully. No, he's, he is the best thing that's happened to me in the NBA as far as a coach. He, um, he lets you go out and play your game and he highlights the good things and not the bad things. And therefore, the players that play for Cotton Fitz Simmons are always playing their best years of basketball. When you play for Cotton, you play your best basketball. And that's, you know, that's, that's what's made me what I am today. Yeah. Um, yes. What or when was the most exciting moment of your career? Well, there's been, there's been a few, um, probably at the time, and maybe even reflecting back on it, in 87, the All-Star game where I was the MVP and we had such a great game in front of my hometown fans at the time in Seattle. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a big game. Yeah, now, you time. weren't supposed to be in that game, were you? No, it was kind of a funny deal. Uh, Ralph Sampson hurt himself, and they asked me to come back as, as a replacement for him, and uh, Coach Riley uh, asked me to start, so I got the starting nod, and I wasn't even supposed to be in the game, and then uh, I was fortunate to be a part of a win and in overtime and uh, just everything just came together it was a tremendous game and a tremendous weekend for me yeah. when you're playing in an all-star game or let's just say during the regular season who gives you the hardest time um, in your stadium there I mean what player do you hate to see or getting off the bus well, he's, he's a local guy. Probably James Worthy is about as tough as an opponent I have to guard. Yeah. Uh, every, every time you, you play against him, he gives you a tough game. You never have, James really doesn't have bad nights. He, even if his shooting isn't on, he's always working. His defense is tough, his rebounding. He just has a real complete game. Plus, he's tall and he's quick. And lots of times you get a tall guy who's not quick or a quick guy who's not tall. 
but he has the he has the whole package, and so he's he's probably and we see him a lot, as you know. Uh, he's he's probably the best one I play against. Yeah, uh, we got to take a quick commercial, but we're coming back with more cotton and more Tom in a moment. <laughs> You all have the X-Man uh, up in Phoenix. Uh, he's a former teammate of yours. Did you have anything to do with bringing him? Well, they asked me about him, uh, Cotton and, and Jerry, and, and when they were uh, inquiring about X and, and if he could help out our team and what type of a person he was. And, and I, I, you know, I made a few comments to the fact that uh, I'd like to play with him again. Uh, we, we played with each other before in Seattle, but it's almost like you don't appreciate a person until you're gone from them and then you know when you come back and, and have that start over again it it's uh it's really worked out well because there were rumors that you all didn't get along when you were up there there's any truth to that there's lots of rumors that go around um anytime you're as competitive as as, as xavier and i that's why we say x by the way mm -hmm. x and i are um <laughs> you you get into some altercations and things in practice but uh, no we always got along well and and uh and, and really really played well together our best years have always been together yeah. cotton is that what you needed are you going all the way this year well i hope we go all the way but uh, as i said last year if you're going to go to the nba finals you had to take that bus through the forum to get there yeah now it looks like portland's got all the athletes on one team but <laughs> as long as magic's breathing i'm always concerned about going to the finals and he is breathing I watched him Sunday up in Detroit, and he was breathing pretty good, but he got the job done. Yeah. So it'll be tough, but X, having X and Tom together, got two tough guys. I don't mind going to the trenches with those two guys. Yeah, you, you're a respected and very successful coach. Has there ever been a tough time for you, though? Have you ever been fired? I've been fired. You haven't lived until you've been fired. You've been fired? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> question about it. You know, and you really haven't lived until you've been fired. It kind of cleanses your soul. You look in the mirror. You say, okay, uh, what did I do wrong? Uh, I usually, I'm man enough to take 90% of the blame, and then we'll spread the other 10 around to some other people. And uh, it's no big deal. I think it made me a better coach. I think it really has made me a better coach. I've been fired twice. One is in Atlanta, and once in San Antonio. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Tom like he's not here for a second. Yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how players get critiqued uh, for their performance? I read a writer's critique of him, said he's a great player. Only problem is he's selfish. Is that true? Well, it depends on how you define selfish. I've never had a score that wasn't selfish. If he's not selfish, he's not going to be a scorer. I can tell you that right now. A scorer's mentality tells him to, when he gets the ball that he wants to score. Mm -hmm. Now, Tom will pass the ball. He makes a lot of good passes. But basically, Tom Chambers is a scorer. That doesn't make him a bad player. I think that makes him a good player. We've been able to win over 50 games a year because Tom Chambers is a scorer. So I don't think he's selfish as far as his team is concerned. He wants his team to win, whatever it takes. If it takes 60 points, which he scored one night, that's fine. If it takes 10 or 12 points, that's also fine. I think the one thing Tom wants now in his career is a championship ring. I don't have one. He doesn't have one. We want the same thing. Yeah. yeah. When you scored 60, how many points was it? 60. He scored 60 against Seattle and 56 against Golden State, and uh, that is fabulous. Yes. Uh, and, uh, on, a, uh, on a night like that, when you're hitting like 40, what's going on in your mind? Well, I had 40 at half, so I had a little bit of time Ouch. to reflect on that. It was, it's just a, a feeling that, that obviously doesn't happen often enough. <laughs> and you can't get the basketball quick enough or often enough, and no matter where you get it, you know that you're going to be able to make that shot. It's happened a few times in my career, and like I say, it doesn't happen often enough, but boy, uh, there's, they're, they're the nights that you're never going to forget. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And they were games that we had big leads, and I want you to know, I took Tom out. <laughs> I set a goal in the Golden State game of 55, and he got 56, so I took him out. There's like three minutes or something to go. He might have had over 60 before that one was over. And against Seattle, we had the game won by 30-some points, and I took him out in the fourth quarter with a lot of time on the clock because I don't think you should rub it in on the opponent when you got him down. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> with this new rule change for international Olympic ball, uh, do you think you're going to try out for the team? 
If they invited me to be on the team, I'd, I'd love to, to do that. That would be an honor for me to go out and represent the country and play on the Olympic team. I wanted to. I tried in 80 and didn't make it, but I'd love to, to come back and, and, and have that chance. Yeah. Chuck Daly is the coach? Chuck Daly, they couldn't have picked a finer coach. He's would you done like it. to be his assistant coach? I would be happy to be his assistant coach if they asked me. I can assure you, anytime you can go and represent the United States in the Olympics, uh, I think that's a great honor. Yeah. I asked... Uh, yes. I asked David Robinson this question, so I'll give it to the two of you. Um, I'm sure you got to think positive, believe in yourself. You plan on being there in the end. Who will you be there with? Boston Celtics. Mm. <laughs> Boston team look good this year, Utah? They're very strong. They have, they have the big guys and the young guys now pushing the ball up the floor. Um, I, I do think, though, Chicago, you know, it may be their year, too. They could, they could slip in there. With Michael Jordan, you can't ever cross them off the list. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. How are your kids, by the way? They're doing great. Um, in fact, I think they're allowed to stay up tonight and watch the show. So, hi, kids. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> your son is uh, in my hometown. He's in Cleveland with the Cleveland Cavaliers with Wayne Embry and Lenny Wilkins, director of player personnel. They're going through hard times because of all their injuries, but they'll bounce back next year. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming by. And I'll see you guys up there when I stop. Thank you. Bye again. Tom Chambers, Cotton Fitzsimmons. We'll be back.